All right, so a vertex here. An angle is a figure made up of two rays or sides that have a common endpoint called the vertex of the angle. Okay, so if you look at it there, denotes it, the vertex of Y, the point there, it's where the angle, or the two rays meet. Uh, there are four ways to actually denote this specific angle. Okay, you can say angle Y. When there's no other ray up there and it's just the one vertex, you can just say just the letter, so angle Y. All right, I cannot say just angle Y if I add another ray to it. Now I have technically two vertexes, two different rays. I cannot say just angle Y because I don't know which one I'm talking about now. Okay, but when it's just itself, you can. Uh, angle XYZ and angle ZYX, the big thing to note there is what is in the middle of both of those. What letter, Camden? Between what? What letter is in between the both and the second one? I have XYZ or ZYX? What letter is in the both? In between? Why? Why? Anytime you do that, you always got to make sure you put your vertex in the middle. Anytime you label them with three different letters, make sure the vertex is that middle letter. Okay, you're going around. Um, or if they use a number, you can say that number. That's kind of the nicest one sometimes. If I say angle two, um, I know that's the angle where the two is denoted. There it is. Okay, so number one here. I want to name... Uh, that angle in four, or sorry, three different ways. There are actually four ways to name number one there. Who can give me one of the ways to name number one? Ryan, what's a way I can name that? Name it, just like they're worried up here. Angle PQR. That is one of the acceptable forms, correct. Tom, what's another one? Angle one. Yeah, it gave me a number. I'm going to use that number. It's angle one. What's another one, Tyler? So, I, which one? So, I have angle PQR, angle one, Troy. Angle Q. I can use just the vertex. Angle Q there. Uh, the other one I could do is I could do angle R, Q, P if I wanted to. I could flip them around from the first one. Okay. Try numbers two and three on your own. Yeah, very good. Number two, angle H, J, K is one of the acceptable answers. What's another one, Keegan? Uh, one. Mm, there's no number one there. Angle J. angle J. There you go. If I had a one right there, I could call it angle one, but this one does not have that. And what's the last one, Jack? Angle K, J, H. Very good. Number three, Trevor, give me an angle on number three. Angle B. Angle B, if I'm talking about the whole angle, right? If I'm talking about the whole angle, I guess, but since there's two different angles, that'd be tough to say just that one. Does that make sense? Because now I don't know which one it is. So let's add to that one, maybe. Angle ABC. Now I'm talking about the big one for sure. There we go. What's another one, Nick? Uh, ABD. Angle ABD. And lastly, uh, another angle I could have is angle what, Bryce? CBA. CBA. Very good. Again, a lot of different ways to label angles. All of them, they put the angle symbol in front. Okay, now we're going to talk about classifying angles. So classifying in terms of acute, right, obtuse, or straight angles. Talked about them earlier in the vocab. Again, other definitions there, possible angles. If I look at number four. So number four, I have angle NMP. If you were to classify that angle, how would you classify it, Jessica? The one that's highlighted up there? That'd be an acute, a right, obtuse, or a straight angle. That is an obtuse angle. Very good. What about number five? QMN. So I take angle QMN. Uh, what are you thinking? 
Yes, Camden? That would be a right angle. That would be a right angle. Very good. And last but not least, I have angle PMQ. PMQ, the small one right there. Drew? That is an acute angle. Very good. Protractors. Protractors are a way that you can uh, find degree angles, to find the measure of the angles. Okay? So the first one, number five, says find and classify angle XWZ. So I have XWZ here. What do you notice about this angle? Does this angle start at zero? No. So the best thing to do is to find the angles. So this one goes to 140 to 20. What am I going to do with those two numbers, would you suppose, Jersey? Subtract. Subtract them. So to find the degrees, you take 140 minus 20. And my angle is what then, Jersey? 120 degrees, which is a what angle? Johnny? 120 degrees? That is an obtuse angle because it is larger than 90 and less than 180. Obtuse. Okay, next I have a, a sorry, angle YWZ. So angle YWZ. Same idea. I can use the angles, I can subtract them. 110 to 20 is going to give me an angle of what, Tyler? That is a right angle, which is how many degrees then, Noah? 90 degrees. Very good. How come you can't use the top? You can. If I do the top ones, uh, that's a good question. Let's see if I can erase it here. If I do the top ones, I would be at 160 to 70, which 160 minus 70 is still, in fact, 90. 90. So, yeah, you can use either one. You just can't use the top and the bottom. Does that make sense at the same time? That's a good question. You guys got a pretty good hold on that one. We're going to start going into the actual tougher stuff here. Okay? So the measure of angle XVU, all right, we're talking about the whole angles now. So our big angle can be found by adding the two part angles, which is what we talked about yesterday, those segment postulates. If I add the two smaller segments, I get the whole segment. Well, if I add the two smaller angles, I'm going to get the whole angle. That's what this is saying. Okay. So angles are congruent if their measures are equal in the figure XVW. Or sorry, angle XVW is congruent to angle WVU. Congruency symbol is an equal sign with a squiggle above it, or the symbolic shows congruency now. Uh, because the angles have equal measures, VW is an angle bisector. Again, it cuts it in half. Um, of XVU because it divides angle XVU into two congruent angles. All right, so we're going to use what we know about angles now to try and solve some of these missing angles up here. Angle CF, so we're going to find the measure of angle CFB. I want to find that angle right there, and it's highlighted on mine. If Angle AFC is a straight angle. So AFC here is a straight angle. How many degrees is a straight angle, Ryan? 180. So to find this angle right here, what do you suppose I'm going to want to do, Ryan? Yeah. 180 minus 78 gets me my missing angle there, which is what, Kendrick? What's 180 minus 78? 102 degrees. Okay, remember that because we will use that for number 12 as well. Number 10. Uh, we're going to find the measure of angle EFA. So I want to find EFA. If the angle is congruent to DFE. So here's DFE, and we know that EFA is congruent. Knowing that right there 
gave, what's the answer? What's the actual measure? What's the actual degrees? There's something after the five might be tough to see. Yeah, it is. 51 degrees. Okay, so this one now is 51 degrees. I know that. I know this one right here is 102 degrees. We figured that one out before. All right, the next part here. We want to find the measure of angle EFC. So we want to find EFC if DFC is congruent to AFB. So this one is now congruent to that angle. So what angle do we know now? What is this angle right there with the blue X is? That one has to be 78 degrees because of the congruency factor. Okay, because that congruency factor, that is 78. Now, how can I find my big angle there? What am I going to do, Max? Add which ones? 78 and 51. Yeah. If I add 78 and 51, I get my big angle, which my big angle is what then, Max? Uh, 129. 129 degrees. Nice job. All right, last one here. I just erased one of the parts I needed here. Okay. Measure of angle CFG. Now, some of you might be looking up there and saying, there is no G. Ah, because we need to add it. It says FG is an angle bisector of CFB. So what that means here is FG looks something like that. I have to add it. It's that angle bisector. Knowing it's an angle bisector, I now know that these two angles are congruent. I also know this big angle is how many degrees? 102. How do you suppose I can find my two small angles now, Peyton? Divide. Divide 102 by what? Yeah. 102 divided by 2 gets me my angle, Camden, 51 degrees. Or you could look right there because it looks like the same angle. Which, actually, we'll talk about tomorrow, but these are vertical, and that is vertical in the same way. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. But again, the biggest thing is it's just kind of like a puzzle. You just got to start putting pieces together and find out what you can. Okay? Next one here. Same idea. Now we're just dealing with some smaller angles here. All right? So we're going to use the diagram. It is not drawn to scale. I apologize. Um, to solve the following. So I know angle ABD is 37. So I know this angle right here. Oh, that is really bad. I know angle ABD is 37 here. Angle ABC is 84. I want to find the measure of angle DBC. So I want to find this red right there. Using some of those postulates, what might my answer be? Drew, what are we going to do? Yeah, 84 minus 37. Because I know a whole, I know one of the parts, I need to find the other part. What do I get, Drew? 47. 47 degrees. Nice job. All right, number 14. Using the same diagram. On number 14, ABC. Yeah, it's a different one. We're using the same diagram. That would have to draw the same diagram, yeah. ABC is now 115. Okay. ABD is now 48. How am I going to find angle DBC? What do you suppose, Gabe? What am I going to do? I'm going to subtract again. Yeah, 115 minus 48. I know the whole, I know a part, I'm going to subtract them. 
I get the missing angle, which is what, Anna? Sixty-seven, you said, right? Yeah. Okay, I thought I heard you correctly. Sixty-seven degrees, yeah. And again, it's using that same postulate theorem from yesterday, really, and today. Last one. Promise. There you go. BD bisects. Angle ABC, so key there. It bisects it. Because it bisects it, I know what then, Caitlin? Uh, what? Oh, they're equal, congruent. They are equal. Yeah, because of that bisects, I know they're equal now. It says ABD equals 6X plus 3. Okay, so this is equal to 6X plus 3. DBC equals 8x minus 7. Okay. Knowing those are the same, what am I going to do to set this up, Camden? Set up, an set up an equation. How would that equation look, might you suppose, Camden? 6x plus 3 equals 8x minus 7. Very good. 6x plus 3 equals 8x minus 7. Because I know they're congruent, I can say they are equal here. Okay, so I set up an equation to solve for x. Now I get my variables on the same side, similar to what we were doing yesterday. Subtract 6x gives me 3 equals 2x minus 7. Add the 7. I get 10 equals 2x. And x equals what, Camden? Five. X equals 5. However, what do I need to go back and find now? ABD. I need to go back and find angle ABD, which was my blue angle here. So I take 5, plug it in here, and I get an angle measure that is equal to what, Martina? 33 degrees. Nice job. Using that same setup down there, I'd like you to solve number 16. It's going to be a very similar to this one. Walk around. I see a lot of us have the right answer again. What do you get for x, Tyler? You get x equals... 30 degrees. Or no, x equals 6. x equals 6. Thank you. You're right. Now I need to plug that back in to find my missing angle. And I get the angle, which is what, Tyler? 30 degrees. 30 degrees. All right. Again, recognize angle bisectors, you're going to set them equal to each other, very similar to yesterday. Here is your assignment.